class. Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to talk about biconditional statements and good definitions. All right, so first we're going to start with a little vocab. Uh, if a conditional statement is and its converse are both true, so if our conditional and the converse, when we switch the hypothesis and conclusion, if both of those statements are true, we can say that that statement is reversible. And if a statement is reversible, if a conditional statement is reversible, we can write it as a biconditional statement. Biconditional, so if we think about bicycle has two wheels, a biconditional statement is a conditional that goes two ways. So it goes forward and backwards. All right, so let's look at this. If our conditional statement is if P, and P just stands for some hypothesis, then Q, where Q is some conclusion, our converse statement is when we switch the P's and Q's, we switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. If Q, then P. All right, our biconditional statement, if both of those two things are true, then we can write our biconditional, which is the hypothesis if and only if our conclusion. So notice, it doesn't start with the word if. It actually goes in the middle. And what this means, let's look at symbolically what these are. So I'm going to just draw a little divider here. And we're going to use our arrow symbols to denote our statements. So our conditional statement would be P, then Q. So if P is true, it implies that Q is true. Converse, Q, then P. So if Q is true, then P is also true. Our biconditional goes both directions. So we start with P. And we end with Q, but instead of just going one way, we can go both ways, and we use a double arrow to denote that. So that's our symbol for biconditional, is that double arrow. All right, let's look at our first example. So given the statement, if the sum of two angles is 180, then the angles are supplementary. We want to write the conditional statement, the converse, and the biconditional statement if it exists. Now, the conditional statement is what we were given. So here I have if the sum of two angles is 180, then the angles are supplementary. And I know it might seem a little, I'm just going to abbreviate supplementary. I, I know it might seem a little repetitious, but sometimes they want you to write all three, even though if one of them is in the directions. So there's our conditional statement. Now converse, remember, is when we switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. So here I can use my, let's use our markers and underline. So I'm going to underline the hypothesis is the part after the if word. So the sum of two angles is 180 is our hypothesis. Our conclusion is after then. So the angles are supplementary. So this is our conclusion. And this one is our hypothesis. All right, so I'm just going to switch those. So if, now here we have to be a little careful. If I just simply switch it and I say if the angles are supplementary, well, I actually want that, that word two in there. If two angles are supplementary, because we want to make sure that we're just talking about two angles. So sometimes we're going to move things around just a little bit, but you still want the, the main ideas of the conclusion first, main ideas of the hypothesis last. So if two angles are supplementary, again, I'm going to abbreviate, then the angles, uh, well, let's look. We want to say then the sum of the two angles is 180, but we've already said two in there. So we could just say then uh, the sum, then their sum. We could say their sum is 180. So again, I'm changing just a tiny bit so that it sounds better, it flows a little nicer, but the main ideas are still in there. Two angles are supplementary. The sum of the angles is 180. I haven't changed any of those main ideas. I've just reworded a couple things just to make it flow a little better. All right, so we have our biconditional and our converse. Now, let's look at this last part. Let's go back to the instructions really quick. We want to write the biconditional statement if it exists. And it says if it exists because biconditionals only exist 
if the conditional and the converse are true. You can't always write a biconditional statement. So first, we have to decide if they're true. So let's look at the first one, the conditional. If the sum of two angles is 180, then the angles are supplementary. Well, that's what it means for two angles to be supplementary. So I'm going to say that that is definitely true. If two angles add to 180, then they are supplementary. Let's look at the converse. If two angles are supplementary, then their sum is 180. Well, that's what supplementary means. Again, it works that direction. So they're both true, which means I can write my biconditional statement. So our biconditional statement, we don't want to start with if. We want to go back to the original statement, but drop the if and the then, and add an if and only if in the middle. So we're going to write it like this. The sum of two angles is 180 if and only if the angles are supplementary. All right. And that would be our biconditional statement. And it makes sense. The sum, and we want to read it again just to make sure it flows nicely grammatically. So the sum of two angles is 180 if and only if the angles are supplementary. Sounds good to me. All right, let's go to the last page here, last piece. So we talked about biconditionals. Now we're going to talk about a good definition. What makes a good definition in math? So all definitions can be written in if-then form. We can write them as a conditional statement. They're not always going to be written as such, but we can always change them if we want to. Now, a good definition is always going to be reversible. It's going to be written, or it can be written, as a true biconditional statement, and we want to avoid using vague or imprecise or difficult words in that definition. We want it to be really clear. So let's look at this example. Is the following a good definition? A square is a figure with four right angles. Well, if I asked this to my class of students, is a square a figure with four right angles? They would all say yes, a square has four right angles. But that doesn't make it a good definition. We have to really look at the pieces in order to figure out if it fits all that criteria. So first thing is it has to be reversible. So let's see. Um, let's change this to be a conditional statement, which means we want to write it in if-then form. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to have to change things a little bit because if I say if a square is a figure, that doesn't really make any sense. So I'm actually going to change, um, well, I'm actually going to change the words figure and square. I'm going to say if a figure is a square. And I know that it's tough sometimes when you have to bend the rules and, and sometimes you change it and sometimes you don't. It's all about whether it sounds right. So you're just going to have to watch, watch that when you're doing these problems. So if a figure is a square, then it has four right angles. Okay. First, we have to make sure that that's true. In order to be a good definition, make sure that it's true. So if a figure is a square, picture a square, then it has four right angles. Yep, that's true. All right, so we've got a true statement, true conditional statement. Now, in order to be reversible, we need to make sure the converse is also true. So let's write the converse. So remember, we're going to switch this. So now, and now we have to be careful again. If I simply say if, it has four right angles. Well, what is it? You haven't said what it is. So we're actually going to say if a figure has four right angles. Remember, we can't write it in a sentence if we haven't said what it is yet. We can't use a pronoun before we use its actual proper noun. So if a figure has four right angles, then it is a square. All right, so now we have to figure out if that's true. If it's true, then that means it's reversible. So let's see, if a figure has four right angles, then it is a square. Well, a square does have four right angles, but can you think of a counterexample? Can you think of an example of a figure that has four right angles that's not a square? Well, I can. Counterexample for this converse statement would be a rectangle. A rectangle is a figure that has four right angles. 
but it's not a square, which means this is not a good definition because it's not reversible. It worked one way, but when we reverse it, it I, I can think of a counterexample. So it's not a solid, strong definition. So not a good definition. All right, so remember when you're doing definitions in math and you really want that good definition, you have to make sure it follows all three uh, criteria. Make sure it's reversible. Here we showed it wasn't. If it's reversible, we know we can write it as a true biconditional. So really those first two conditions go hand in hand. And then just make sure that you're not using any vague or difficult words or imprecise words when you're writing your definitions. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, math is fundamental.